What is up, Drum Alert Nation? I'm your host, Killer Keemstar. Let's get right into the... What's up? Ladies and gentlemen, internet, it's 8 Thoughts 2988, once again, coming at you live through the power of the internet. <laughs> and uh, yeah, dudes, like I said, this is no troll for those of you who are walking in blind on this and it's like, what? what's going on? 8 Thoughts has got the cancer? 8 Thoughts has got the cancer? And I guarantee you there's haters out there who are mentally deranged probably going like, yeah, good search, you're right, that's what you get for talking trash about other people, yeah, because that's what logic is. This guy was talking trash about people on the internet, and you know what? He got what he deserved. He got cancer. Yeah. Glad you got cancer. Na 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 boo boo, you're gonna die. Yeah, that's what you get for talking trash about Call of Duty. Yeah. But yes, ladies and gentlemen, it is true. I do have cancer. Um, not like a crazy, crazy cancer. I've got one of the most rarest cancers in the world. I mean, like because I'm a rare individual, rare species of human being, because I am such a different person, I get a different kind of cancer. I got a blood cancer. Well, we're going to get into that. They think I have that. They're not sure now, but they're pretty sure I have a blood cancer called polycythemia vera, which is essentially a genetic disorder that takes place in the bone marrow where red blood cells are created. And for whatever reason, my red blood cells generator, uh, DNA, whatever genetics don't work properly. They're kind of like, you know, a little bit what we do today, guys. I don't know. We're going to give eight thoughts cancer. That's what we're going to do. Yeah. They're like Filipinos. They just keep working, 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 and they push out way too many red blood cells and they just keep throwing out red blood cells. Like my body's like, I had enough. Like too bad, man. Take another red blood cell. They just keep throwing red blood cells out into my body. And on top of that, the red blood cells that they do push out don't work very well and they're sticky. So what happens is, and the consequence of that is red blood cells are responsible for carrying oxygen from your lungs to your muscles and giving you energy, right? Well, my red blood cells are not very efficient. And like I said, they're sticky. So when I, you know, exercise and whatnot, I can get tired easily. And I've had this my whole life and I never knew why. I'm a good sprinter, played lots of basketball, played professional basketball, played university basketball, full scholarship athlete. You know what I'm saying? Don't want to brag or nothing. And I always was just so exhausted after playing. Like I was like, why am I always so exhausted? I almost got energy. Like during the game, you know, I'm in the moment and I'm working really hard. It wasn't like, you know, overly working harder than everyone else. I was a talented player. I wasn't like one of those, you know, bench players that came off and had to work really hard to be good. I was just a naturally very talented, athletic individual, as you can tell. And But after the games, I'd just be like, oh, so bagged. And like every month, I'd be getting sick. My immune system was, is crappy. And when I was a kid, I used to get ear infections all the time. So what happens is, like I said, my red blood cells, for whatever reason, are not efficient. They don't know for sure. We'll get into that. And this is why it's a cancer update video. And also they're sticky, which, and there's a lot of them, which leads to a higher chance of strokes and heart attacks and stuff like that, because obviously your blood's not really moving through you like water. It's like oil, but like sticky oil. And so it's like, eh, and I have to take blood thinners. But here's the thing. They gave me these blood thinners to take, right? And I don't like taking them. I started taking them and like, I, they, they make me feel so bad. I, I've had mono before too. I've had mononucleosis. I know, like, I pretty much had everything. Trust me. I, I've never had AIDS. So that's good. You know what I'm saying? My, I've always been with, you know, good women and I don't do any kind of hard drugs. So, um, you know, I don't have AIDS, I, I, but I've seemed to have everything else. But I got mono when I was younger. And, I, you know, if you ever had mono, it's because your red blood cells are super depleted and you like, have no energy. And that's kind of like having polycythemia vera. You get tired easily. Yeah, yeah. so anyways, so I took the these war, whatever blood thinners and aspirin as well. And like, it made me feel really tired like I had mono again. I just couldn't feel what was going on. I was like, am I dying? Is this like the beginning of the end? Like I had no energy. I was sleeping all the time. And I was just like... Oh man, it's like a pain in the ass. Like I just wasn't feeling myself. I felt like I was run down. And I was like, you know what? Forget this. I'm stopping these drugs, man. These drugs are horrible. Like they don't even know I really have 110% for sure. They're not sure I have more tests coming up. And anyway, so I'm like, I'm not, I'm not taking more. So I stopped taking them and I just, you know, I've been taking vitamins and stuff and eating healthy. I do eat well. I, you know, I enjoy my, uh, my tea, my herbal teas. So I've been eating really well. I always eat really well. Little Nancy takes care of me. She's a good cook and she, you know, I don't eat a lot of fast food or junk food. Maybe once in a while, maybe once or twice a week, I might have a hamburger or something, but whatever you got to live. I may drink a little too much, but actually that's not true either. That's a misperception 
perception of people. They think I'm drinking all the time. I don't even get drunk. I've never been wasted in like 10 years. Last time I was wasted was like a long time ago. Anyways, so now the update is I have to go have a bone marrow biopsy done now to have more tests done because they did a bunch of genetic testing and they couldn't figure out what I have. They don't know why I have this polycythemia. Vera, they're supposedly saying it is, but then it could be something else as well. So I was supposed to have the genetic testing done a while back, but I was like, ah, I don't want to go because they have to like drill into your hip bone and like pull out your bone marrow and also pull out a piece of your bone. And I was like kind of, I was scared. <laughs> I was a little bit nervous. And I was thinking, what the hell am I going to do this for? If you already know what I have, because the doctors didn't give me the right information. They're like, if they already know what I have, what's the point of getting this test done just so you can put me on a list and like, you know, have me as like a rare, you know, because like I said, I think one out of every hundred thousand people have this cancer who have cancer and there's not much testing done around it. There's not much, you know, funds being put into it because it is super rare. And what makes it even more rare is anyone my age who has it, it's like one out of a zillion because usually it only afflicts older people. And I know, hey, don't you? Oh, oh, look at you, you big old idiot. What are you doing on your neck? You're like 80 years old, buddy. Why'd you get a life? Oh, I'm glad you got cancer. <laughs> but it only afflicts mostly older people 65 and older, not, you know, 35 and older. Apparently, I've had it since I was 20, whatever I had. I got tested the first time when I failed the drug test playing basketball in California. And they're like, oh, man, you got to get blood tests and all that stuff, you know, because of violations, NCAA and all the rules and blah, blah, blah. So they did a blood test. And then that's when they said, like, uh, your blood's really wacky, dude. You got to go, you know, get more testing done. And since I was in America and I'm a Canadian. Uh, they're like, well, I'm also go home because this is going to be expensive tests. And I had to go see the hematologist and the blood specialist at all the university and the cancer clinics here. And back then, they didn't know a whole lot about all this, right? They didn't know anything about this because it's such a rare disease. And just in the last five, six years, they've had more studying and stuff done and they're struggling to figure it out. So, long story short, I'm going to die. Okay. I'm joking. I'm joking. So since back then I've had this, I don't know what's going on. So I got to get this bone marrow biopsy on Friday. I think it's May 23rd. So they're going to have to freeze the hip thing here i have to lay on a bed they're gonna have to drill into my hip which sounds like a lot of fun pull out some bone marrow and then you have to go click 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 cut some bone out and then they're gonna look under a microscope and hopefully then they will come to a final conclusion of what the heck i have and the chance of it being something worse which it could be really bad there's this weird cancer that you have that eventually your bone marrow turns to like sludge or like what the hell is it called not fibromyalgia like myos my anyways i can't remember what it's called it's not good is what it's called and if you get that, that's like terminal. You're up, you're up the creek without a paddle, as they say. So, fingers crossed. Don't have that. Huh? Make sure to subscribe. To eight thoughts. Yeah, to smash that like button because eight thoughts is gonna die soon. Um, I just joke. I'm not dying. You can't kill. I'm a god. I'm a demigod. I'm like that guy from freaking uh, 300. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you, you can't. You can't take me down. You can't take me down. But. Anyways, what are you going to do about it, man? You just keep on keeping on. But, yeah, that's what's going on. So, it could be that, and it could be nothing. But it's it's got to be something. It's going to be something. I have too many freaking symptoms my whole life that something's going on. I don't know. Like I said, when you burn so bright, you can't burn forever. It's it's the ones that burn the brightest who, you know, die. The ones who just live life like a freaking, you know, uh, simpleton and have no energy and no power and no strength and no charisma. They just live forever because they just, you know, that's what happens, slugs. But when you're a freaking wild animal cheetah running through the Sierras of the freaking Africa, just devouring everything, well, your life expectancy doesn't go as well. So, whatever. I've lived a good life so far. It's been a pleasure. I'm having a good time with you dudes out here doing YouTube videos. Yeah. I'm glad you got cancer because you're just nothing but a hater. Yeah, that's right, buddy. <laughs> well, so anyways, that's uh, that's my cancer update video brought to you in part by Boogie Two. I mean, Eight Thoughts Two Nine Eight Eight. Um, and we'll see what happens. I'll let you guys know. Keep you posted on what's up with that. And um, yeah. That's pretty much it, boys. Hope you enjoyed the video. Yeah, well, we really like the thoughts. It's nice to hear about people we like on YouTube and internet, you know, having cancer. It makes us feel good about ourselves because we don't have cancer. So, ha, <laughs> All right. You guys take care. Thanks for watching. And uh, if you're new here and uh, you want to support 8 Thoughts, every every hit, every like button, every every subscription is one, one closer prayer to 8 Thoughts not dying. So, you know, it's in your hands to save my life. And last but not least and most importantly, you know, stay black. And don't let the hockey crack rip through the shape of the blue blue base on his brain. Can't drill the blood in the charge. We'll try to stop you in the board. All his flat. We'll make all those millions for his brother's game. White man.